What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 27th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for the rest of this week and heading into April of 2019. So before we do get into this, this, guys, I uploaded a video earlier today about the relative strength index. So for everybody that doesn't know what that is or doesn't know how to use it or you want to know how I personally use it, go check out that video after you watch this one. If you guys do want to, and if you're new to the channel, I have two links down below, one being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group, both of those being 100% free, so get in there if you want to be a part of our community. So without further ado, let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall market. So the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day today down about $13, down nearly 0.5%, 0.46% to be exact here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing down about $32.15, down about 0.13%. And the NASDAQ composite guys down about $38, 0.5% red day at the close of the market. So honestly, guys, this market is very, very funky in my eyes, right? We still have yet to pick a direction in the SPX. Are we going up? Are we going down? We really haven't set a direction, which is why you saw in the title, I'm being super, super patient in this market, and I'm not really forcing anything until we see a direction. So let's draw out some support and resistance levels very quickly so we can get a better understanding of what is going on right now in terms terms of price action in the S&P 500. So we can see, you know, we can draw some levels here. And for those of you guys that have been watching the videos for a while now, we've been talking about these main levels in the S&P 500. One of them being at around 2790, the next one being at around 2820, and then the one I just drew for you guys is at about 2860. So as of right now, We've been trading within the 2790 support and the 2820 resistance level on the SPX. And if we zoom in a bit here to the five day, five minute, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? From the 22nd of March, which was last week up until today, we've been really trading in between these two levels with the exception of us popping above a little bit to 2825, 2830. But roughly, you know, we've been trading within these two levels. And actually today, we saw a huge dip in the S&P 500. We ended up gapping up a bit at the open here to 28.25. We double topped here and sold off aggressively from 28.25 all the way down to 27.88. So nearly a 30 to 35 point drop there in the SPX. And if we can see quickly how much on a percentage basis that ended up being, we ended up falling a very quick 1.3% in the S&P 500, and from there, we started to reverse at about 12 a.m., or rather 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right in the middle um, of the day, right? And we started to pop up. We started to break above the 50 SMA here, started to make higher lows, higher highs. The 50 SMA broke out of the 180 SMA, which again is a bullish sign on any time frame that we're analyzing. And we ended up closing the day roughly at about 28.05. Again, putting us in the middle of this horizontal channel that we've been trading in over these past couple of days. And another thing I want to point out to you guys today, which is kind of worrisome to me and why, again, I'm being super, super patient here for the S&P 500 to pick a direction before I do end up taking any swings any or adding more uh, money to my current swing positions and really just why I've been patient. So take a look at this chart right here. I'm sure a lot of you guys can pick out what I'm about to say, but just take a 
listen here, right? So we can see we popped a 28.60, right? We remember that. That was about a week ago. That was the high that we've been seeing here over the past couple of months. And then from there, we sold off aggressively to about 27.90 again, that support that I just talked about a couple of minutes ago. And then we popped up to 28.25 and we got rejected by this 50 simple moving average. And what do you notice again today, guys? We got rejected this morning by that 50 simple moving average at a lower price from the previous rejection, which was on the 26th, which was yesterday, which is telling me that the SPX right now on a smaller term basis here on the 20 day, one hour chart is making lower highs. And what is a lower high, that is a bearish sign, right? Just like a higher low is a bullish sign when a stock is uptrending, it's typically making higher highs, higher lows. We all know that, right? And when a stock is downtrending or beginning to downtrend, it's making lower highs, lower highs, lower lows. That's how we can really see a downtrend starting to form. So this is slowly starting to look like a bearish sign for me, right? We can see the little double top here, pretty close to a double top, the lower high here from the previous. And today we solidified another lower high from the previous, and we did not end up breaking out of the 50 estimate towards the close of the market. So Although we did end up maintaining this support at 27.90, we're still trending below the 50 SMA resistance. So this puts us in an interesting spot heading into tomorrow. So what I'm going to be waiting for and really to see what direction we're heading for or heading to in the SPX is one of two things, right? Are we going to end up breaking this 50 SMA and passing this high at about 28.20, which is going to really uh, erase that lower high downward bearish uh, trend that's slowly starting to form now? Or are we going to get rejected by the 50 SMA, which is going to continue this bearish trend that's forming and ultimately break below the support, which is going to be a huge, huge break of pattern to the downside, right? These are the two scenarios that are playing out. And based on what the technicals are really based on what I'm seeing here in terms of the technicals, you know, it's looking like there's a big possibility we're going to do something like this tomorrow if we end up waking up and let's say the futures are down tomorrow, let's say large caps are down, we can definitely do something like this, which would push the SPX into a bearish mode over these next couple of days, in my personal opinion, based off of what I'm picking out here from the technicals. And if we hop out to the 184 hour chart, again, very important to look at multiple different time frames here. If we were to get rejected by that 50 SMA, like I just told you guys, we could end up selling really down to 28 or 2730 rather and we can see exactly what I'm talking about here and 2730 roughly roughly 2730 2735 roughly this level was an old resistance which we made into a new support which is really the next level we could sell off to if we do end up doing something like this. And take a look at here, guys. Take a look at this. Another possible pattern forming is a head and shoulders in the SPX. We have the left head, or rather not the left head, the left shoulder, the head. And if we were to do something like sell off here and maybe pop back up and do something like that, that would be the right shoulder. Obviously, we need at least another week of data here to see if that actually starts to play out, but this is something that potentially could happen here based off of what the technicals that I'm seeing are showing and pointing towards, right? So let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think about this, and if you're enjoying the video so far, go down below, hit that like button as well. It really does support the channel and supports me in general. And, you know, that's what I'm really picking out here from the S&P 500, the technicals that I'm seeing here. So I think, did I cover that one little thing that I was looking at before? Actually, yes, this is another thing I want to talk to you guys about. We're trading in between here 
uh, the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA, really the past hour and a half, two hours of the market. So this is another thing I want to see tomorrow. Are we going to pop out of here or are we going to push down? Because we do see a little bearish cross here on the five day, five minute on the SPX, which again is another bearish sign. So this is another thing to keep an eye on. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the SMP 500. Hopping over here now to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys. This is looking pretty bearish too from what I'm understanding here, right? So let's just take a look. We can see we topped off at 26,200. We all know that from a couple of weeks ago. The next top off was at about 26,000. And now it's looking like we're getting rejected by the 50 simple moving average, which could be the next high, which is at about $25,700. And what is that, guys? That is lower highs, three lower highs, potentially the third one forming today with two solidified lower highs that we're seeing in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which again is bearish. Lower highs forming, that is bearish. Higher highs is bullish, right? So just keep an eye on that here, guys. But nonetheless, we are trading still on top of that $25,500 level of support. And we're still really just trading in this horizontal channel between that level with the resistance being at around 25,800. So let's say tomorrow in the Dow Jones, we do get, uh, you know, end up getting rejected here and we start to do something like this. Possibly we break 25,500. That high here, the third lower high is going to be solidified and we could expect more selling from there with the next target probably being the next support level target being at around we can probably say this level that I drew out for you guys roughly at about $25,100 to $25,200. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones on the longer term charts. If we're hopping up here to the five day, five minute, unlike the SPX where we're trading in between the moving averages here, we're trading above the 180 SMA, um, you know, moving average, holding it as a support. Although we do see the bearish cross here, we're slowly starting to pop back up. So that's another thing to keep an eye on tomorrow. Are we going to pop down below this way, continue to push up? That is something we need to keep an eye on. Let's say we do end up selling off heavily, which I probably, or really not probably, I don't want to just say that we are going to sell off, but let's say I personally think we might sell off tomorrow. And let's say we get this pattern here, the break, you know, this would be a lower high from the previous two. And really, that would be, again, a bearish pattern forming. We could potentially see more selling from there. So that's what the Dow Jones is looking like right now in my eyes, guys. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ very quickly, the NASDAQ composite. And, uh, you know, the NASDAQ composite right now, we are maintaining the 7,300 level of support, which we all know was an old resistance from back in the middle of March. We ended up maintaining that support again about a week ago, a couple of days ago to a week ago here over the span of two, three days. And today we actually ended up selling off pretty aggressively in the morning, like we saw from about 7,390 all the way down to 7,276. We popped up above that resistance, made it a new support again and now we're maintaining that $7,300 level looking to trade between this horizontal pattern here so let me take a look at this 20 day one hour chart to give you guys a better understanding so we're holding the 7,300 level as a support, like I said, and we're just pretty much right now trading in between these levels. We popped out yesterday, right? We had that we had that day where we popped out. We aggressively shot out the 7,400. We broke that level of support, making it a new resistance again, and that is where we're trading right now on the five day, five minute. Um, you know, we can pretty much see the same exact thing. We're just trading horizontally here. Not much uh, to say, more to say here in terms of the NASDAQ. And again, guys, when I'm doing my market analysis in the morning throughout the day, I'm taking a look at every index. Don't get me wrong, but I'm mostly taking a look at the S&P 500 because, again, these are the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. I'm also keeping an eye on the SPY, which is an ETF that trades based upon the SPX as an S&P 500 ETF as we can see you know up here that is what I'm mostly keeping an eye on so in terms of the markets here guys 
there is definitely more possible downside today. You know, yesterday in the video, I was talking about how, you know, is the uptrend continuing based off what we saw. You know, I thought today could have been a nice green day, especially since we ended up, you know, closing on this upswing. But the fact that we dumped aggressively today, that pretty much, you know, erased that, you know, in my eyes. And that's why I do these market update videos on an every single day basis, because this market, especially this market where it's pretty volatile, things are changing very, very quickly, rapidly, which is why I feel the need to do these market updates and it keeps things interesting and it keeps everybody up to date. So what did I end up doing today in terms of trading? Well, this morning I wasn't too active. I was doing some other things. I was busy with some errands, so I wasn't able to trade or be active in the group chat this morning. So I do apologize for anybody that asked me questions this morning. I didn't get back to you. I was not active. I was not on my phone. I was not on my computer, but I was actually able to to get back about an hour and a half, two hours into the market and catch the SPX on a huge, huge downfall. And what did I catch? You probably can guess it, guys. Let me know in the comments section right now. I'll give you five seconds. What do you think I was able to catch in terms of trading? Five, four, three, two, comment, one. TVIX, you got it, you got it. If you got that, hey, you got it, right? So we can see, like I showed you guys, you know, the first hour, we were kind of bouncing up and down here, and this double top, once we hit that double top, we aggressively sold off. And this is honestly where I was able to see this when I got back to my computer after the errands. I was able to see the aggressive sell-off in the S&P 500. So again, like I showed you earlier in the video, we went from 28.22 all the way down to 27.87. And you can imagine TVIX, which is what we trade when the markets go down heavily, especially the S&P 500, is an ETF that does very well when the markets are selling off. So take a look at what this did, guys. From $28 I wasn't able to catch it at the bottom here, but I was able to catch it in the middle of the spike. It went from 28 all the way up to 31, making it a 10% move in the span of, I think this was about an hour. Let's see, from 1030, roughly about 1030, 1027, up to about 1145. Yep, it was, uh, it was about an hour move there. I was able to honestly get in on this little dip right here. And once I noticed how aggressive the EMA was pointing up and how aggressive these candlesticks were honestly pushing and the S&P was just getting battered and battered and battered, I ended up just taking a small position here at around $29.47, roughly $29.50. And I wrote it up till the next pullback, ended up taking my profits nearly at about $30, pro roughly at about $30 exactly actually, which ended up landing me roughly a 1.7, 1.6 to 1.8% uh, you know, profit on TVIX, which I'm honestly pretty lucky to have gotten on my computer at the right time, right? Because if I were, wasn't uh, you know, going to get this trade, if I didn't get this trade, I was probably not going to trade today because you know, like I said in the title of this video, I'm being patient until the market picks a direction, especially with some swing trades that I'm planning on taking, right? So I didn't want to force anything. I want to be patient here, but I did get to the uh, computer at the right time. And that's what I ended up doing at, you know, on my TVIX trade here. And for those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, you know that I took a position in NVIDIA and I'm still holding those shares. Didn't add quite more um, yet to my position because again, the markets were tanking earlier in the day. I didn't want to just add more while the markets were aggressively falling. I want to see more direction for the S&P to push up before I do add more money to Nvidia. And let's say tomorrow the downtrend that I was talking about earlier in this video does occur. I'm going to probably cut losses on Nvidia and take a small little loss at about 2% where my stop loss is uh, set right now roughly at about 2 2.5%. So Nvidia, you know, we did end up going down to 173. Nothing crazy crazy here. We ended up closing back up towards where I ended up buying. I ended up buying at about 176.20, I think, something like that. So I'm just holding those. I'm pretty much at break even right now 
on the NVIDIA shares. So that is what I ended up doing today in terms of trading and what the market in general is looking like. So in terms of what I'm watching tomorrow, guys, you know, the main ETF that I want to point out to you all in this video is a natural gas ETF. And that natural gas ETF is DGAS, ticker symbol DGAZ. And that goes up whenever natural gas is going down in price. And if we just take a look here at the 20 day, one hour chart on natural gas is looking, it's looking extremely bearish, right? We were trending or trading, trending. I can't even say my words today, guys. <laughs> we were trending in between the 275 290 horizontal channel for a couple of weeks there and then we ended up breaking that which we called out a couple of uh, videos ago I think it was about a week ago as that being a very bearish pattern and from there the 50 uh, simple moving average has been acting as a strong resistance we can see clearly the candlesticks have been struggling to get out of that level and today we got that huge tank down to 269 and right now we're seeing something I really want to see before I take a position in DGAS we're not falling all the way down which is going to make natural gas really oversold making DGAS extremely overbought making it not too good of a time to hop in on we are seeing on rather we're seeing not we're not getting oversold right we're seeing the candlesticks are slowly starting to push back up to retest that same 50 SMA which is really opening up a dip buy on DGAS, right? If we just go to the chart very quickly, we'll see exactly what I'm talking about, right? If we just go to the five day, five minute for fun here, we can see 105 is what it hit when natural gas was at 269. And when 269, when uh, natural gas went from that level back up to 272, whatever it is at right now, we got that nice little dip, right? So Probably, guys, these levels aren't going to maintain themselves because natural gas, the futures, they move overnight, you know, fluctuating the price of DGAS, although the market isn't open overnight. So for those of you guys that know and trade these, you obviously know that, which is why they're very risky to trade overnight because the futures... For all we know, natural gas can open up at 280 tomorrow, and this could do something like this, right? But let's say, miraculously, they do maintain these levels, and we open up at about $100, 101 and we maintain this 180 SMA support here. I think that's going to be a very good entry point, especially if natural gas does confirm the rejection we got we actually we can actually see it here too on the 180 SMA here if it confirms the rejection here tomorrow we slowly start to push down that will open up a nice entry point as well as we get the rejection on the 50 SMA here on the 20 day one hour chart that will get a great um, entry point and in my eyes again do your own research in DGAS so in terms of ETFs guys that's what I'm watching tomorrow. DGAS is definitely my number one. Of course, TVIX, I'm watching that one tomorrow again, just in case the bearish uh, you know, scenario that I'm thinking does end up playing out. TVIX is going to be a very good play tomorrow in my eyes. Of course, NVIDIA, it's maintaining the 173, 174 support. This one's looking pretty good for tomorrow. If the markets, let's say, you know, the bearish thesis, thesis that I'm thinking that could happen tomorrow with the candlesticks and the resistances that we were talking about, let's say that doesn't happen. Let's say we have a green day tomorrow. Excuse me, NVIDIA might do very well, and this one could potentially do very well and get back up to the 178s, maybe 180, where at that point I would probably add more money into the position. So those are three that I'm watching heading into tomorrow. Apple, this is one that's kind of looking like the S&P 500 right now where it's making lower highs. So the high here at 197, the next at about 192. Now we're at about 188. So this is looking a bit bearish right now, but let's say tomorrow we break out of the 50 SMA. That's going to be a pretty big breakout pattern with a target at about 192 from there. So this could potentially be a play of about 2% there. And it's kind of in a tricky spot, right? We're trading, we're holding the 180 SMA support, but we're also getting rejected by the 50 SMA resistance. So this really has to pick a spot or rather pick a direction before I want to trade it. So Apple, AAPL, it just needs to pick a direction. If it's going up, 
that's going to be a solid play in my eyes for a reversal since it has been beaten down about $10 per share here over the past couple of trading days. Another one that's looking very good right now, guys, is Tesla. So Tesla right now, it's kissing the 50 SMA resistance, and we're slowly starting to break out of that level. And what did I say in the previous couple of videos? This is a massive resistance for Tesla. If we were able to break out of this level, we can run up to the next resistance, which has proven to be a resistance over the past couple of months, which is the 180-day simple moving average. So that would pretty much put us trending and trading in between the 50 SMA as a support at that point if we do break out of it maintain it as a support and the 180 SMA is a resistance really giving us about a five ten uh, dollar per share buffer there where we can really profit on the shares so that's probably about a five percent potential move there especially if we continue the push up here tomorrow in Tesla and those are just a couple that I'm watching guys let me know down below in the comment section what you all are watching in terms of stocks ETFs I would love to know and I'm just going to end off the video here so if you enjoyed the video feel free to go down below hit that like button drop a comment and subscribe again I uploaded a relative strength index RSI indicator video before this video go check out that video if you want to know how I use the RSI to my advantage, I promise you will find value in it, especially, especially if you're a beginner out there, you just started trading, you just started doing your analysis, you should go watch that video right now. So I'll catch you all tomorrow in the next video. Again, the Discord chat, if you want to get in there, we can talk throughout the night into the morning. <laughs> I promise you guys a bunch of people are in there. Again, thanks for the support. I appreciate all you guys. Peace out.